Hello, this is my uh, reputation to the affirmative side. I would like to start with uh, some statistics on Bernie Sanders' campaign and the, the top five candidates and how much money they've raised. But, but Hillary Clinton has raised one hundred eighty-eight million dollars total. Ted Cruz, Republican candidate, has raised one hundred four million, and in third place, Bernie Sanders has ra raised ninety-six million dollars. Bernie Sanders, through not accepting PACs and going through smaller donors and the people and getting <coughs> more donations per person, has become the third top earning <coughs> donations in the entire political campaign, disregarding Trump, who is funding himself. So this shows that going through the independent people and not having these restrictions still lets a person like Bernie Sanders, a man of the people, a socialist Democrat, he still has a chance running up with all these people that are accepting money from big corporations and super PACs. And it seems that as if this, the state of the status quo now is not being detrimental to a person with these values. And just a fun fact, Clinton has gotten 57 million from super PACs, Cruz has gotten 49, and Sanders has got less than 0.1 million dollars from super PACs total. My second point, is that is from Bradley Smith on the myth of campaign finance reform. The quote goes, what's your answer to the point that there isn't any constitutional difference between the distribution of the movie on video and providing access to the on the internet, providing DVDs either through a commercial service or maybe in a public library, or providing the same thing in a book? Would the Constitution permit the restriction of all of those as well? So if you're taking away someone's right to donate to a campaign or someone's right to running for office, is that also taking someone's right away for donating to anything else? Because you were technically donating and giving them the encouragement and the advancement in going through their campaign, whether it not be a presidential race or just uh, donations for a regular uh, charity. I'm going to close with uh, a little thing about Mr. Obama. And this is from Nicholas Confessor on the results it's from an article called Results Won't Limit Campaign Money Any More Than Ruling Did. Mr. Obama's grassroots money set a, high, set a high bar in 2012. He did not take any public donations in his entire uh, campaign for the Democratic national election. He only went through smaller donations. He didn't take anything from PACs until he was finally nominated as president for, as, as the Democratic national uh, candidate. It was a triumph for the small donor in 2012, and we see that Obama's campaign worked, right? He did win the presidency, and through small donations like this, and, this, and what we're at right now, it seems to be we're, uh, we're giving money to the right people, and electing people that are making a difference. Obama has he lowered the unemployment rates, he lowered the teenage pregnancy rate, that just, I guess that was a byproduct. He, he did a lot for the did a lot for the economy, and who's to say that that this, which was the Citizens United and all that has been prevalent since his election and his campaign? So what's saying now that what will, what, is, what what would be the problem now where it wasn't the problem in the election ago? Okay, and also I would like to confer, uh, just to clarify. Don't understand, my, my partner said, it means it's illogical. <laughs> yeah.